And I was out, what, Monday and Tuesday. I was out the majority of both of those days. One day I was dressed for the season. I was dressed with the uh, spring clothes on, but it was so cold, I had to come home and change. The next day I was dressed for the other season, which was winter, or season that was maybe a little bit chillier than, than spring. But then I was dressed incorrectly because it was a hot day. And I thought about it. I said, you know, Lord, in this season here, because we are in a new season. We are literally in a new season and we are spiritually in a new season. I said that to the people of God on Sunday, literally meaning that it is the springtime. We crossed over on March 20th or what have you into spring. But the truth of the matter is we are in a new season spiritually. And as we are in this new season, God gave us specific information on Sunday as to how we are to approach and take hold of this new season that we have been entrusted, that we have been given. And in giving us this new season, we we came from Joshua chapter one, where God continually to, uh, uh, told, continued to tell Joshua to be strong, to be courageous, to fear not, to be strong, to be only be strong and to stay in his word. And I'm saying all that to say in a new season, you're going to have to be flexible. You're going to have to be able to move in an instant. You're going to have to be able to be versatile. I'm telling you at the, at the, at the wink of an eye, you're going to have to be able to switch and change. You might go out one way, but you might have to come back and change and put something else on, whether that's physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, maritally, socially, whatever it might be. You may find yourself in one thing in one minute. And before you know it, that thing has flipped and turned and you find yourself in a different situation. But in every situation that comes, I want to encourage your heart tonight. Make up in your mind that you're going to be pliable, that you're going to be versatile, that you are going to be a person who's going to carry out God's will, whether you like it or not, whether it feels good or not. Woo! Help me, Jesus. Whether you want to or not, you got to make a decision. It does not matter how I feel about it. It doesn't matter how it makes me feel. It doesn't matter what I see, what I think I see. It doesn't matter what I think might go on. What matters is that I'm doing God's perfect will. And I just want to encourage your heart. Somebody needs to know this tonight as I needed to know it some days ago and I'm still standing on it. Be still and know that I am God. Hear the word of the Lord to you tonight. Be still and know that I am God. He's God, people of God. Yes, he is. And he will not allow you to sink, nor will he allow you to fail. It may look like, it may appear that the enemy is winning. Oh, but as I said on the onset, and I want to repeat it for all ears to hear, it may appear to be that he's winning. He may have got a good lick in. Oh, but I want somebody to know that the devil ain't winning. I said ain't intentionally. He ain't winning. He can't win because God is for you and you will win regardless to the length of time that it takes for your manifestation. Go ahead on and celebrate God just knowing that you are in your new season and your new season will require something of you. It will require your versatility. It will require you to be able to adapt. It will acquire, require you to want to be in God's will regardless to how it feels or how it looks or what it seems like. Anybody with me tonight who knows that sometimes God's will will challenge you to the very end. Sometimes God's will will bring you to a place where all you can do is just hold your head and say, Lord Jesus, help me. Because guess what? God's will is not your will. God's thoughts are not your thoughts. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Hallelujah. But when you are adaptable, when you are able to adapt to what he says, when he says it, oh God, I thank you, how he says it, when you are able to adapt to that, you better know it's his grace. Because I promise you, any devil can come in and cause rebellion to be in your spirit so strongly that you will be wayward. You get a hard heart and not want to bow. Oh, but when you can say, Lord, nevertheless, 
Not my will, but thy will be done. Like Jesus said, then you know you're working with something. Then you know you're on to something. Then you know that what you're going through is just a test. It's only a test. It will not last for long and it will not kill you. You are coming out and you're coming out with a praise. Hallelujah. You're coming out with a testimony so you can go and run and tell somebody else, I was where you are. My back was up against the wall. The enemy had pushed me almost through the wall. Oh, but one day I heard my name called by heaven and I remembered whose child I was. I remember the power on the inside of me. I remember that God gave, God gave me that getting up glorious power and I could not lay down. I could not die. I could not stop. I could not turn around. I had to press toward the mark. Come on somebody, are you pressing tonight? Are you pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus? You got to press in this season. It won't be easy, but you will win. It won't be easy, but you will recover all. It won't be easy, but you will pursue and overtake. No devil in hell is going to stop your breakthrough. Declare it over your life. No devil in hell is going to stop my breakthrough. I am determined. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody determined tonight? Glory to God to go to the other side. I don't care how hard it's been. It's been a little rough for me. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. I'm saying this before you, before, before the Lord and before all the years. It doesn't matter how hard it gets. I got to keep my eyes pressing. I got to keep my, my, my stance focused on the, pot, the prize, which is ultimately doing God's perfect will. Lord, I thank you tonight. Hallelujah. Be still and know. Ha, yeah, ha. Be still and know. He's God. Hallelujah. He's God. It's nobody God, God but him. It's nobody like him. Hallelujah. It's nobody that can do anything differently in your life if God has sanctioned this or that to be done. Can't nobody stop what God has promised your life. But you got to be lined up. You got to be in position. You have to be where God desires and wants you to be, which is in the very center of his will. It might be a little hard right now, <laughs> but guess what? Ain't nothing good or, or worthwhile comes easy. It's nothing that's going to really be a great glorious thing that will come easy. Stand your ground. Take your position and forward march. Because as you march on, people of God, there is a victory that belongs to you. And God has written your name on it. Tonight, we're going to go straight to the word. I just wanted to encourage myself. I wanted to encourage the people of God. I wanted you to know that even if it seems difficult right now today, March, what, the 26th, 27th, somewhere around there, If even if it seems difficult, don't believe the hype. God is preparing you for your destiny. He's preparing you to be a warrior. He's preparing you not to lay down and give up. He's preparing you to go on even when it's difficult, even when you can't see your way. God wants warriors. He's looking for somebody in the earth realm. Is it you? Is it you or is it you? He's looking for somebody in the earth realm whom he can show himself strong through. Hallelujah. He wants to do exploits in your life. He wants to use you mightily. Will you let him? Will you give him your temple, your body? Will you give him what he needs so that he can use you and bless the world by your anointing in Jesus' mighty name? Come on, clap your hands, people of God, and bless him. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Go ahead on and clap your hands, all ye people. Just give the Lord a shout of victory because you are being still and you are knowing that he is God. Yes, he is. Nobody's God but God. Hey, hallelujah. I said nobody is God but God. Hallelujah. And we thank him tonight. Yes, we do. Grab your Bibles. Get your pens and your highlighters. 
Come on, sit down and let's talk about the word of the Lord tonight. This is word explosion. This is the word that's going to change our lives. This is the word that's going to put us in a place of victory in the midst of situations and circumstances trying to come contrary to what God has said, even in the midst of great joy, in the midst of miracles, in the midst of resurrection life. Because you know we are on our way to the resurrection season. Don't be disturbed. Something has to die in order for a resurrection to take place. What's dying right now? Let it be flesh. Let it be a carnal mind. Let it be enmity of things that are enmity against God. Let it be those things that die in your life so that the real deal can arise and live in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Because as a death comes, resurrection is right around the corner. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I will rise. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to his name. Well, well, well. We are in a place tonight where this word can keep us here from now till this time next week. That is how potent this particular topic and situation that we are dealing with, that is how strong and how uh, uh, meaty it is. People of God, we are always talking about the mouth. We are always quoting the famous scripture that death and life is in the power of the tongue. We always talk about it because it's real and your tongue has power. People of God, it is essential that we stop for a moment and assess how are we using this very strong, awesome vehicle in our mouth, this tongue. The God, the Bible calls it a world of fire. How are we using our tongues? What type of words? Are we saying with our tongues, listen to this, are our words, words of power, are they words of death? Are our words, words of um, victory? Or are there words of defeat? Do we use words that are words of curses? Or are we using words of blessing? Are we using words, people of God, that's going to build up? Or are we using words that tears down? I want to know what type of words are you using? Are you using words that's going to bring life? Or are you using words that's going to bring death? Are you using words of health? Or are your words full of disease? Are you using words of joy? Or are you using words of sadness? What type of words are you spewing out? Are your words words of fate? Or are there words of unbelief? Are your words words of victory? Or are you using words that's bringing defeat? What are the words that's coming out of your mouth? Do you use words of love? Or are your words words of hatred? Are you using words of bondage? Or are your words words of freedom? Are you people of God using words of power? Or are you using words of weaknesses? Are you using words of truth? Or are you using words of lies? What? What are you doing with that power that's in your mouth? Tonight, we're going to look at some things that will have, will literally transform lives. Lives that have been totally uh, sabotaged by certain words, certain spirits, certain things that have been conjured up from the pit of hell. I want you to know that when you're in a fight, that you've never been in before like that, when you know you in a, a different place, you better know there are some devils that have come from the pit of hell to deal with you. That's how badly they want to stop you. That's how badly they want to get you to a place where you can't go any further. Because, oh, if you break through this fight, and if you get out of this situation, you're going to be unstoppable. Everybody that you come across, everybody whose life you pass, is going to change them for the good, for the better, and for the best. And the devil knows it. So he's fighting you with everything he's got 
But every time he looks around, you're still rising up. You're still lifting up your hand. You're still singing your song. You're still doing your dance. You're still blessing God. You're still reading your word. You're still praying. You're still studying. You're still living what you preach. Hallelujah. And when you can do that, hallelujah, Jesus. When you can do that, people of God, you better know that you are definitely on your way to greater in Jesus' name. I just asked a question. What words are you spewing out? Are your words words of truth? Or are you spewing out words of lies? Are you giving your mouth the ability to change your situation for the better? Or are you opening the door to every demon in hell to bust you in your head when you open up your mouth with negativity, with complaining, with murmuring, with finding fault, with nasty language, with evil words, with uh, arguments, and with conflict, and with strife, and with lies? Are you allowing the enemy to come in through the open door that you've provided? I asked a question to many people, and I'm going to ask it to you. Have you ever met someone or have you ever been in a situation with people, whether it's on your job, in your home, whether it's in your neighborhood, in a club, uh, um, whether it's in a, a church or what have you, but you in school even, have you ever met someone that no matter what they said, it was always a lie? No matter what you talked about, they always came up with something, but you knew it just wasn't the truth. Have you ever met somebody that no matter what, they will just continue to tell lies because they think they can get away with it? Now, before you begin to choose those people, I want you to understand that lying is not just telling the untruth. Lying is literally living opposite of what God has ordained for your life. Counterfeit living, hypocritical living, lying in your words, deception, trickery, all of those things are lies. Saying we are disciples, but not living like disciples. All of those things are lies. In this series that we're doing, it is stands from building a new. It's still that same series. However, in this particular uh, lesson and lessons to come out of this, I want to look at certain areas. I want to look at lies that we tell just by spewing out of our mouths from the wickedness of our minds. Lies that we perform by the actions as we uh, communicate with others or as we interact with others. The lies that we tell when we don't walk in love, but we walk in hate. When we don't walk in forgiveness, but we walk in unforgiveness. Even those things are lies. Lies even deal with slander, gossip talking behind people's back and saying things about them that you wouldn't dare say to them. That's lies. All of it is a spirit of lying. But I want to break part of it up tonight to deal with the portion of telling lies. Telling lies, people of God, has become a phenomenon for some people. Telling lies has become a recreation for some people. Telling lies for some people is all they know because truth has never been embraced. But I ask the question, have you ever been in a situation, whether it's in your home, your marriage, your family, your church family, your job, your clubs, your schooling, classrooms, what have you, do you have someone in your life, a sibling, a parent, a child, a friend, that's, they, they, you love them, but that's all they do is lie. They will lie before they tell the truth. You could be looking right at them. They can be doing whatever it is that you say they're doing, but because they have mastered this habit of lying, they're going to tell you, no, I wasn't doing that. No, you didn't see that. No, that's not true. Why? Because a, a habitual thing is actually what has been formed in that individual's life. And people of God, 
It can be habitual to be nasty to other people. It can be habitual to, to, to gossip. It can be habitual to um to, to be unforgiving. It can be habitual to want to make sure that you hurt and spew out venom from your mouth when somebody offends you. It can be habitual for those type things as well. So once again, when we're talking about lying, it is a huge umbrella that we are looking at. But I'm going to cue in on a few things tonight. And then we're going to proceed. In Matthew chapter 5, we've been looking at the different Beatitudes. I'm going to take a break from the Beatitudes. When we come back to that, I'm going to be at verse number 9. However, I want to look at Matthew chapter 5, but I want to look at verse 21 first. Uh, I'm sorry, not, yeah, verse 21 first. And you, and, I, and you won't understand what I'm reading in verse 21 until I have taught something. But then I want to skip over to verse 30 something in a little bit. So I'm going to read verse 21. It says, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. I want you to now go with me to Matthew 5. And I want you to begin reading with me following along uh, at verse 33. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. It tells us here, people of God, that we are not to swear falsely, that we are not to swear on heaven or on earth or even on our own heads because we don't have any control of even our hair turning white or black or what have you. If our hair has turned white, believe you me, there's nothing you can do about it. You can dye it in the natural, but it's still going to be that color hair. If the hair is black and black is what it is, you can dye it in the natural, but the hair is still that natural color black. What he's saying is you have no authority over that. That has come with you into the earth realm. And since you have no authority, don't use your mouth so loosely to swear on heaven or earth or even by your head, because guess what? It's going to cause some problems. So 37 says, listen, let's just make it clear. And let's just say this, whatever you mean, let it be said. If it's yes, let it be yes. If it's no, let it be no. But anything more than that, is of the evil one. Anything more than that comes from another source, from another place, because the, the word of God has given us instructions that we should not go any further than a yes and a no. With that being said, looking at what we're talking about, your tongue. Your tongue has many opportunities to make fire or to make peace, to make a uh, our unity or to cause division. Your tongue has the ability to do great and awesome things in your world. Your tongue can bring you to your destiny in a, a, a fashion that will bring glory to God or that same tongue can keep you from reaching that destiny because it is filled with the evils of the enemy. Now let's look at uh, Proverbs, is it? Verse 6. Chapter six, Proverbs chapter six. We're building upon this word because we want to see some things. I want you to know that when there is a lying spirit that is in action in your life or in the life of those around you, that spirit will keep you in poverty. Know that the lying spirit opens you up to darkness. It opens you up to the realm of the evil one. And I'm going to show you why it does that. But before we can get to that part of it, I want you to follow with me, along with me, in Proverbs chapter 6. And we want to begin reading at verse 16. Proverbs 6 and 16. It says here, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, six. 
seven are an abomination to him. Now, I have down and I, and I write down definitions because it just helps me to understand and to be able to relate it to others. But what is an abomination? Uh, the Bible says these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. An abomination is a vile, shameful, or detestable action, condition, or habit. It is an intense aversion. It's greatly disliked or abhorred. God is saying here, he greatly dislikes these seven things that we are about to share. Abomination also means an object of extreme dislike. I mean, extreme dislike. God has many different things in his word that he has categorized under the title of abomination. So when we hear that word, let's understand it simply means God hates it. God has extreme hate against that sin. Not the person, whether it's homosexuality, lying, uh, uh, adultery, or what have you. It is not the person, but it is the sin. So understanding what abomination means, understanding that God hates six things, seven is an abomination, just extreme uh, putrid of hatred concerning these things. Look at everything on this list. Look at what God is saying here tonight. He hates a proud look, a look of arrogance, a look of disdain, a looking down your nose at others. He hates a proud look, a haughty look. A, a, a better than you type look. He hates a lying tongue. That's what we're talking about tonight. And it's, in, it's on the list. He hates a lying tongue. God hates hands that shed innocent blood. God hates a heart that devises wicked plans. That's, the, that's your, your heart, your mind he's talking about, where the imagination lives. And sometimes people can sit around and they can think of vain imagination and vain thoughts and wicked ideas and wicked schemes and conjuring up lies in their minds on how they can deceive or how they can get over or how they can masquerade or how they can be hypocritical to prove a point or to get over or to make someone not know who they really are. God hates feet that are swift and running to evil, a busybody, always into something, always doing something. He also hates a false witness who speaks lies. Now, isn't that something? You, are, you, you didn't even witness this. You are a false witness. And on top of being a false witness, you have chosen now to make up stuff because you didn't see it. So there is no way you can be an eyewitness. So you are a false witness. And being a false witness, you speak lies. And one who sows discord among brethren. That's when you're telling such and such, this one said this about you. And then you go and you tell it to somebody else that they said this. And now all of these people that you are connected with, they are getting gossip and bits and pieces of what was said about them when they were not there and they're getting it from you so you are sowing discord that is a violation to the word of god because now you are separating even even the closest of friends now these are the seven things that god hates so let's get it up front and to the point he hates a lying tongue whether your lying tongue is just you telling lies, you gossiping, you slandering, whether it is you being mean to other people with your words, verbally abusing folks with your words, verbally uh, being uh, not a representation of love and forgiving and being patient. All of that is lies. All of that, because guess what? It's lying on the persona of a Christian. What and how should a Christian behave? How should a Christian uh, represent him or herself while representing Christ? When we live a lie, people of God, in our actions, in our words, in our deeds, we are now becoming and putting ourselves, I should say, in a dangerous place. So we understand 
that we should not swear falsely. We understand that God hates 16, 7 is an abomination and lying tongue is one of those. Now, David was saying to God in Psalms 120, you don't have to turn there because I'm going to go there and teach from that soon. But David was saying to God that he wanted God to deliver his soul from lying lips. Because David was at a point where people were lying to him and lying on him. So when you are at a place when a lying spirit is attacking your life, following your life, stealing from your life, there has to be some type of recourse that you begin to put in place. Because if not, that lying spirit is going to stifle you. It's going to stifle your ability to go forward. And if you don't deal with it appropriately and you become violent with your words, you become retaliatory with your words and you begin to spew out evil and venom from, from what you have received. Now you are no different than the lying spirit that came and met you. Do you get, do you, are you getting this? So you have to begin to bring this scenario and this situation to God in prayer. Prayer is the key, people of God, to getting deliverance from this evil, despicable spirit that comes from hell. Now, why is it that we open ourselves up to the enemy? And why is it that darkness uh, pours upon us because of this lying spirit? Turn with me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. We must understand that it's time for us to hate lying. There's a scripture we're going to go to at some point in time that says we need to tell the truth one to another as believers. It's time out for having that poker face or having that um, face where you put on a mask, you know, the masquerading face that when you, you know, you're putting on one face, but you're really actually something else. So you put the mask on so you can deceive the people who are looking upon you. It's time out for that. Lying is not a part of a Christian's life. Whether it's through deeds, words, actions, or what have you, lying is not a part or should not be a part of our lives. And here we're going to see why. John chapter 8, let's begin reading. Oh, let's see. This is going to save your life. It's going to save your marriage. It's going to be able to extend your family to blessings as opposed to curses. It's going to put you in a better place when you're dealing with liars. You're not going to lose your cool. You're not going to begin to spew out venom and death out of your mouth. Because guess what? Your mouth too has to be in a place where God can now shield you from the lie. See, you can't be shielded from the lying spirit and from the loss and from the things that the lying spirit comes to get from you because now you are beginning to get just like the lying spirit and you have now brought another spirit on board and so now the flesh is at war one with another and now the enemy has a field day because these believers so quote unquote are now battling it out and he is the the the, the source of this scenario. John 8, and let's look at here, we're going to look at now um, verse 42. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he said to me, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer. That's why we read verse 21. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it, or as some Bible say, the father of lies. We see here that lies are not associated with God at all. If anything, God has been solidified through his word that he cannot lie. And the reason he cannot lie, not that he doesn't lie, he can't lie. Because the minute he speaks, 
The minute he said it, it becomes what he said. So God doesn't have in him the proclivity, the ability to lie. Now, if he wanted to, he could. But because he's God and he's not a man that he should lie and he's not a spirit of darkness and he's not a spirit that desires to twist things and to make things look one way when they're actually something else to get his evil uh, accomplished in the lives of people because he's not that kind of spirit. There is no way for him to lie. But here we see that Jesus tells the people, the reason you can't get with me and the reason my words bother you and the reason my speech seems so foreign to you is because you're of your father, the devil, because you're doing his will. You're doing what he wants you to do. We are not going to cookie cut it. We are not going to tiptoe through it. People of God, it's for me and everybody else. If the things that we are spewing out in our lives are more toward the darkness than the light, you might you better check whose child you really you really are. Even if you started out being God's child, don't you know the Bible says in one of those verses that you have to work it out to the end, at, uh, uh, bring it to a point where you are working it out to the very end of it? You can't just think that in the beginning, well, I was saved when I was seven, I was 15, I was 22, I was 35, I was 45, I was 60. I was saved then. But now I'm at a point where I've been in this thing for 20, 30, 15, 10, 5 a year, whatever the case may be. And gradually, I find that my behavior is looking more like the other father than the father who I say I am of. We can say, people of God, that we are Christians and we are believers from starting with me on. But the Bible is clear. The way in which you determine a person's Christianity their discipleship, their commitment to God. There are many different ways, but one way he says is by the fruit that they bear. So we see here that, 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 that Jesus is telling them, you can't receive from me. You have a problem with what I'm saying because you are not of the one I came from. Because if I came from him and you were of him and I did come from him, you would be able to receive my words. But instead he said, you are of the devil because you want to do his desires. You want to lie. You want to gossip. You want to slander. You want to backbite. You want to tell somebody off. You want to go off. You want to show your, your, your flesh. You want to flex your fleshly muscles. And guess what? All of those things are of the carnal mind. All of those things are of the flesh. And none of those things are actually good representations of the kingdom of God or of children of God. So we can't be in one breath, I'm a Christian, but in the next breath, I'm cursing you out. One breath, I'm a Christian, but in the next breath, I'm gossiping about you. One breath, I'm a Christian, and in the next breath, I'm telling lies to you, on you, or about you. Either way it goes, I am checking or should check that type of action because it's not representative or it's not indicative of a child of the king. Stop thinking that we can do it however we choose and label ourselves as such because guess what? That label may be acceptable to you and to man and to those who run in your group. But God is not interested in labels. God is not interested in what you call yourself. God, Jesus said in John 14, he says, if you love me, then keep my commandments. If you love me, then do as I tell you, not suggest, not what you think you should do. He said, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. So he says here, he speaks a lie. I mean, sorry, when he speaks, he speaks a lie because guess what? There is no truth in him. No truth. Listen to that. There is no, the devil has no truth in him. Therefore, when he speaks, he can't ever speak truth because it's not available to him. 
It's not there. He doesn't possess it. It's not in him. So every time we are being used to deceive, we are being used as a trickster. We are being used to say one thing when it's actually something else. We have just slid it over into the kingdom of darkness because that spirit that we are actually uh, in, uh, letting uh, operate in us is from the one who has no truth in him. Then Jesus just put it point blank. When he speaks, he speaks a lie because he speaks from his own resources. Have you ever find, been in a conversation where people are saying things and you're like, what, where do you get that from? That, that's not, that doesn't even make sense. But they're speaking from their own resources. It doesn't mean that the resources have been checked out or that they're valid or that they're validated. It just means that they just speak. They spew things out because guess what? Truth is not what they're after. Truth, matter of fact, they they repel truth. They 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 actually um, work against truth because truth brings light, and nobody in light and truth wants to be a liar. Nobody that's walking in light and truth wants to be dece deceptive. Because guess what? When the enemy went to Adam and Eve, that is how they got them to destroy themselves. That is how he got them to destroy themselves. By a spirit of beguiling. He beguiled Eve. What he did? He actually seduced her and tricked her and making her believe that God didn't truly say what he said. And then he twisted what God said. See, that's what it's all about. It's a twisting that goes on. And, and, and when it goes on, people of God, it goes on in the heart. No truth in him. He speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar. What is a liar? A liar. Who is a liar? A liar is a person who tells lies. A liar is a person of falsehood. A liar, a cheat, a con artist, a deceiver, a deluder, a, a, a fabler, a dissimilator, a fabricator, a false witness. What is a, a, a liar? A liar is a fibber, a misleader, a phony, one who is a storyteller, a trickster, and many other words can be used. And the Bible says that's who Satan is. When we have those characteristics, I don't care what you say you're not. Your character tells who you are and it shows who you are without you even knowing because that's how deceived you have become. Look at what it says now. Once it says he is a liar, then it also says, and he is the father of lies. Now, I remember one year, Marilyn Hickey, years ago, when I first came into the knowledge of I could possibly teach the word. I saw a woman of God on television, run home every day after work, teaching school at uh, Colton Junior High, run home, not literally, because I would always stay after school and help, but I knew she would come out at a certain time. So I had my VCR taping Marilyn Hickey. That's the first woman of God I really, really saw teaching the word. And I remember her talking about the different lies that this could be. It could be the Antichrist. It could be, you know, uh, the other one that, that was birthed, the Antichrist and somebody else. But from my sense of what I'm teaching right now, I'm a Keep it simple. He's the father of lies. And that's all lies. So what is lies? Lies are false statements made with deliberate intent to deceive. An intentional untruth, a falsehood, something intended or serving to convey a false impression, an imposter, an inaccurate or false statement. A falsehood. What is lies? Untruth. Speaking falsely. This is what lies are. Lies are backbiting, uh, deceit, deception, defamation, detraction, dishonesty, disinformation. What are lies? Distortion, evasion, fabrication again, falsehood, falseness. Falsification, falsity, fears, fiction, forgery, fraud of um, fraudulence, guile, hyperbole, inaccuracy. What are lies? Lies are um, misrepresentations, inventions, misstatements, myths, 
perjury, lies are slander, revelings, revilement, tall stories, white lies, why lies, lies, just lies. And here we are at a point, people of God, where we must face the music and we must understand that the one who is sitting above in the lying section as the father of lies is not our God who is the God Almighty. It's not El Shaddai. It's not the God who can do <coughs> all things but fail, excuse me. But it is the father of lies. And if he is pulling our strings, if he is working in our lives so strongly, excuse me, I need to drink, so strongly, where we have now submitted to this habitual activity, we are at a place of danger. But the reason why it's dangerous, not just because we are not a child of God, because that's what it said. You can't be both a child of God and a child of the devil simultaneously. It, it just doesn't happen that way. You must realize and recognize that our character of who we say we are speaks louder than who we say we are. Our character says it all. I want to run to that scripture where it talks about the tree. <clears throat> and then I'm going to come back because I want to show you something else. I have scriptures everywhere. So let me see if I can find it. Matthew, I know it is Matthew. And um, let's just go back to the book of Matthew. We're going to find it. But remember who is the father of lies. Remember who is the one that conjures that, 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 that is the one that actually keeps it uh, oper operational and keeps it going because that's what he desires to have lies and deception and deceit. Because let me tell you something, the minute you get so involved in a lying spirit, that deception overtakes you. And now you can't even begin to pinpoint truth when truth comes to you. That's why your spirit automatically rejects the word of God because the word of God is truth. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So you don't have the Holy Spirit because if you had the Holy Spirit, it would be a spirit that will lead you into all truth. But the devil's spirit, which is the spirit of darkness, the spirit of lies, it leads you into all lies. So that is why it has become such a, uh, a, a glorious thing in your life is because you have now given yourself over to this particular situation. What do I mean when I said earlier, we're going to get to the Matthew, but what do I mean when I said earlier that it becomes habitual? Habitual simply means it has become now a habit. You know how little children, when they're growing up, certain things they do, you know, we laugh, we think it's cute. But the truth of the matter is, if you have a little baby that is now practicing telling untruths, it's best that you deal with that now because that is an indication that a spirit of lies has connected with that baby and the enemy has sent an imp to that child at a young stage so it can grow up with that individual and they can be a first class liar. Now, Habitual. What does that mean? Habitual. It's a habit. It's an acquired behavior pattern regularly followed with until it has become almost involuntary, almost a particular practice. See, that's why we can't even blame the devil anymore when we get to the point where we have practice it. And, and, and I say it because it can be a lie. It can be a, 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 a lie from your behavior, your, your, you know, your, your uh, actions, your words, your, your, your deeds or what have you. So it, so when you practice something for so long, it is now like second nature. It's involuntary. It doesn't even, you don't even have to think about it. It just happens because why? You have now created a stronghold in your life. You have created a place. And what is a stronghold? Simply put, it is a comfortable place for the enemy to rule and dominate your life. And he dominates anytime we give him a crack. He will come in and he will, he will, he will uh, set up house. 
Because all he's looking for is a part in, a way in, a foothold, a toe, a little uh, pee hole, whatever it may be. He's looking for some way to get into our lives because ultimately it's about our destruction. He's not trying to do anything to help us or to make us better. It is literally about our destruction. That's why Adam and Eve went down to their destruction because God said the day you eat of this tree, you're going to surely die. And that's how sin came into the world. That's how we fell. And that's how we are at this point now of dealing with this satanic assignment. Because guess what? He murdered, the Bible says, from the beginning. When did that murder happen? In heaven. How did it happen? When he wanted to take God's place. That was the first murder ever committed. But oh, did he not get what he deserved when God kicked him out. And the Bible records that they saw him getting up out of there like lightning. So guess what? The first murder came from the father of lies. And when you look at it, we're going to see some scriptures in a little bit that's going to tell you how lying is equated to murder. And how lying is equated to something else. And I want to show you. It's going to blow your mind. But let me look, get to ha habit. It's an acquired behavior or a pattern that's regularly followed until it has become almost involuntary. It's a particular practice. A habitual thing that becomes like our everyday life. And it now comes alongside of us. And it becomes us. It becomes who we are. But we still serve in ourselves that comfort of saying that we are believers, that we are Christians. And I'm telling you, this study has awakened me. This study has made me say, God, that's why grace was so important tonight. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Because people of God, when we begin to operate out of another kind of spirit, we must understand somewhere along the way something happened. Because once we get saved, now you could be a liar in the world and it's going to be all right because you're doing what you're supposed to do. You know you're a liar. You know you're the devil's child. It's nothing wrong with that. Guess what? Because you do what you know to do because that's who you belong to. But I'm talking about people who proclaim to be on the other side, who proclaim to have switched teams, who proclaim to have gone into the light and got away from the darkness. That's the people that, that I'm talking about, not the ones who steal with God. The, 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 with the devil. They're supposed to lie. They're supposed to cheat. They're supposed to, you know, kind of, uh, do all kind of evils one to another. They're supposed to hate. They're supposed to be unforgiving. They're supposed to go off and gossip behind each other. That's what they do. Did, you know we did it when we were on the other side. So now many of us have just brought that same behavior to the light. And I want to venture out to say this. If it's true light, that behavior cannot stand. If it's real light, that behavior cannot even begin to have life in that light. Why? Because the light, people of God, di dispels, hallelujah, all darkness. So we have to now begin to look at it and see what's really going on. Am I truly converted? Have I really been saved? Am I true? I know people don't want to talk about it. This type of teaching isn't popular, but I promise you, all of us at some point is going to stand before God. And what I don't want to do is stand before him saying, God, I gave the people the word they wanted to hear because I wanted to have them come back. I wanted them to be a part of the ministry. I wanted them to, I wanted to see their smiling faces. But guess what? It doesn't matter about that. I promise you what matters is that we are getting the true word because there are enough churches that are open today that's giving people what they want to hear. I don't have to duplicate that. I don't have to be a part of that. That is already been well provided for. So if I'm going to be the same of what it, that what we have, then there's no need for me. That's why we are teaching what we're teaching because we don't want to just be a, a part of a, a club. A good old boy club or a good old girls club. We don't want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of truth. Now, I said, let's go to Matthew. And I haven't found my exact place yet. But I know it was talking about the tree. The tree of good. Uh, 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 the tree. I just read it not long ago. And I thought I wrote it down. 
Uh, anybody can find that real quickly where it says about the tree being a good fruit. And if the tree is good, then the fruit is good. I, 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 I'm, Matthew 7, 17. <sighs> Sounds like that's it. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Aha, that's it. That's it. Now, it says here, you will know them. I'm, I'm going to look at verse I'm going to do verse 16 first. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. We're talking about how we know what we know about those that we are around and even ourselves. Every tree, every, even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree, verse 18, cannot bear bad, bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, here it is, verse 20, by their fruits, you will know them. Now, of course, Jesus is talking about different uh situations and circumstances here about false prophets and all of that but a false prophet you might not be a prophet but a false christian a, 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 a counterfeit christian a hypocrite persons who are acting one way but doing something else trying to show off that you know falsity that 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 false persona of who they really are but behind the scenes when they undress and they're naked there's somebody else the bible says here you're going to know them by their fruits so guess what if we know other people by their fruits, should we not know ourselves by our, by our own fruits? Should we not investigate our oranges and apples and our bananas? Should we not look at the strawberries in our lives, the pineapples or whatever, <laughs> whatever fruit there is? Should we not begin to identify the fruit on our tree? Have we been that blinded? Have we been that deceived that we can think for a minute we can have this kind of character spewing out of us on a daily basis and we can still say, but I'm saved, but I'm saved, but I'm saved. No, you can say it and you can even have people preach you into heaven when you close your eyes if you want to, but none of that works because there is no preacher that will ever preach that kind of a fiery a sermon that's going to change the destiny of a dead corpse sitting in the church. No preacher will ever be able to do that. People do that because they want to kind of give people some type of solace and some type of comfort by preaching people in the heaven. But really, your responsibility is not about the person who has expired. Your responsibility when you stand up and preach is about all those lives that are still breathing and maybe from that death. There could be a resurrection of a spirit that is lying dead in a person who's walking around alive. That's what a that's what a funeral is supposed to do. Rejoice about that person's life, glorify God, and rejoice. But on the same end, it's supposed to heal or uh, uh, reach out to those sitting in those pews because guess what? That might be the first time that 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 lady's son or daughter or husband or friend or whomever came to church. And guess what? They could say on the day that my mother died, on the day that my father died, on the day that my aunt, aunt, uncle, cousin, son, daughter, whatever, on the day that they died, I saw the Lord. Because King Uzziah, the Bible says in Isaiah, said that on the day when King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. Sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes some people will never come to Christ until there is a debt of some kind. Whether it's a person, whether it's their lives, whether it's their marriage, whether it's their finances, whatever the case may be. They might not ever get to God until they reach rock bottom. So it is essential for us to examine our own fruit. I started early and still this day. It is our, um, our uh, purpose to examine our fruits. Stop lying to yourselves and to, to ourselves when we keep saying that we are something that we may have started out being, but we got it. Here it is. That's the scripture I wanted. We got to endure until the end, the Bible says. Yes, that's it, Holy Ghost. We have to endure until the end. So that means you can start out saved. You can start out with him. But somewhere along the line, you switch teams. And now you are no longer in light, but you're in darkness. 
And how do you know that? By the fruit, by the things that you're doing on a continual basis, by the things that you're continuing to spew out of your mouth. Your tongue is a true representation of your relationship with God because the Bible says no man can tame the tongue. But if you don't bridle it, it says your religion is vain. It says if you don't try to do something with it, your religion is vain. It is no need for us to fake it and try to think that it is okay for us to do all that we want to do with our tongues, whether it's lie, whether it's gossip, whether it's slander, whatever it is, and expect God to just give you a pass and say, okay, you can shoe on in because guess what? Grace, the blood. Yeah, all of those things are wonderful, but you must understand that we are saved by grace. What? Through faith. And you got to walk this thing all the way out. So now, Bringing it to a close, not closing just yet, but bringing it to a close because I have some things you have to see. You must recognize that I've given you scripture to show you that lying is not of God. Lying is not something that we just do because we do. There are spirits behind every word that comes out of our mouths. Hear this. And whenever we speak, whether it's a word of anger, there are spirits that's going to back up that angry word. If it's a spirit of lies, there's a spirit that's going to back up that lie. If it's a word of gossip, there's spirit that's going to bring that gossip right where it needs to be. And while you are pulling on these spirits from the devil, from hell, from the pit of hell, while you are utilizing these spirits, guess what? They are gaining ground in your heart and in your life. So now when you wake up in the morning, forgetting about the day before, forgetting about the activity that you have just anticipated, uh, 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 participated in, you are now thinking that, Oh, like the Bible says, we look in the mirror, we get the kind of man we are, and we move on. The spirit world does not forget one word that we have uttered. Do you know words do not die? Do you know words are forever living in the spirit realm? And do you know that there are words right now that the enemy is using against you and I, against us? Because guess what? We have spoken self-imposed curses on our own lives, on our own marriages, on our own health, on our own finances, on our own uh, destinies. We have spoken these words, not someone else, but us. We have spoken curses on each other. We have spoken curses on our uh, uh, children, on our families, on our futures. And, and, and guess what? We are now blaming the devil. But ultimately, the Bible says your tongue has the power of life and death. So that means you utilize your tongue for the wrong uh, spirit, life or death. And the Bible says, whoever, whichever one you love, that's the one you're going to live by. That's the one you're going to feed on. So now, no more saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, and yet we are living like the devil's children. That's from me to everybody else. Stop saying it because all you're doing is deceiving yourself. And when you're self-deceived, that's when you're really in a pickle because God can't even help you. Why? Because he hates lying. He hates the, 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 um, the lying tongue. He hates the false witness who, who lies. He, he hates the false witness who swears and lies. He hates that. So since he hates it, guess what happens? You now become an enemy of God's. Okay. Let me, let me back some of this up before we go. First thing I want to look at Proverbs 26. I want to look at verse 24. This is going to blow your mind right here. You want to know why a person lies? You want to know why they keep lying? You want to know why they keep on spewing that, that, that venom on you? Come on. Come with me. Walk with me to verse, verse 24 in, in chapter 26 of Proverbs. Look at it. It says here, he who hates disguises it with his lips. And lays up deceit within himself. People of God, I want you to understand, Lord Jesus, right here and now, the lying spirit, the strong man is hate. Hatred is the thing that has crept up in a heart 
that devises lies. I'm telling you, I'm reading right here. It says, he who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within himself. <clears throat> when he speaks kindly, do not believe him. <laughs> For there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. Look at verse 28. Hold your horses, your hair, your wig, your weave, whatever you got. A lion tongue hates those who are crushed by it. And a flattering mouth works ruin. Did you hear what the word of God said? I didn't say this. I am not brilliant enough to even think or write this. The Bible says a lying tongue hates, 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 hates. And hates is what leads to murder. That's why we read 521, because the Bible is clear that a person who lies, not only are they lying to deceive, to, to swindle, to, to make you believe one thing or what have you, but they are lying because he, it, that person's heart has now been, been filled with deceit, because deceit is within the, that heart. Listen now, hear this. So when deceit is in that heart, that heart is now able to disguise what he or she really feels by their lips. And so instead of them saying, I hate you, I really despise you, I don't like you, they're going to lie to you. Because that hate has to come out of the heart. Because the heart has been infested with deception. So a lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it and a flattering mouth works ruin. What is hate? Hate simply is to dislike intensely or passionately, to feel extreme aversion for or extreme hostility toward, to detest. Do you understand that hate and murder is hand in hand? The spirit of hate is the spirit of murder. Aversion literally means a strong feeling of dislike, opposition, repugnance, or antipathy. What is antipathy? Antipathy is habitual dislike. Just, just I, I don't, I don't like you continually. I made myself not like you because I practice disliking you. So hate people of God is simply a person who has a lying tongue. They hate the people who are, and the Bible says, listen, when you are lying, you are crushing those who are at, at the mercy of your lies. And that's why the scripture tells us we have to be covered and protected by God. But when your mouth is being used to spew venom, whether it's uh, retaliation, venge, ven being vengeful, being unforgiven, gossiping, or lying, I mean, or, 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 or backbiting, or all of those things. When you are now guilty of this type of action, God's hands are tied. He can't even protect you. Because no matter if you say you're his child, and you're coming up against his child, he will deal with the one who's coming up against his child. Yes, he will. But if neither of you are actually acting and behaving like his child, well, guess what? It's a free fall for the devil to just get glory out of that situation because God is nowhere there. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it. I have something else about 1 John 3.15. Let me see what that is real quickly. I know it's almost time to go, but for those who have to leave, now nah, I got it. I understand, but we're going to stay a few minutes more because there's so much more, but I know I didn't. I didn't intend to finish it all tonight. This is something that we're going to have to dig into because I promise you lying takes on all different kinds of faces. It's not just a person who tells lies from their, from their mouth. Okay. First John, let's look at it. Three and 15. It says in three 15, it says, whoever hates his brother. There you go. That's where I get it from is a murderer. And you know that no murderer 
has eternal life abiding in him. And the Bible says, if you lie to those you are lying to, you are crushing them and you are lying to them because you hate them. And 1 John 3 says, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer and no murderer has eternal life in him. And where does eternal life come from? From the spirit of Christ. But you can't have both murder and hatred and eternal life at the same time because guess what? Those two cannot occupy the same place. The Bible says light has no fellowship with darkness. Why are we teaching this? So that whomever is bound, whomever is in a place dealing with this type of things, you will not bust hell wide open. But God is giving you room to get it right. God is giving us room to get it right. He's giving us room to repent, but not just say, I'm sorry, not just feel bad for a minute, not just think of it as being, oh yeah, I messed up. No, it is obviously you have to get saved. And once you get saved and you truly meet Christ for real, for real, for real, it's going to deliver you from the hand of the enemy. That's what it's all about when it talks about being translated. When we come into Christ, there has to be a different, a demarcation of a difference. Because if we're doing the same things we were doing before we got saved, fornicating, committing adultery, living in sin, what evidence is there that there is a change? Do you know the lying spirit also covers adultery and fornication? In order for us to participate in fornication and participate in adultery, there has to be a, 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 a proclivity on the inside for us to lie. Why? Because fornication is not just sex out of sight of marriage. Fornication is all of the sexual um, sins like uh, homosexuality, lesbianism, bestiality, and all of that. And then adultery you know, having sex with someone who's married and you're not married to that person. So adultery or a person who is married, having sex with someone that they're not married to. So adultery and fornication is strong spirits that come from under the, or that's under the umbrella of a lying spirit. So even in that, we can actually detect that, that we are operating in a lie because the Bible says clearly that we are to flee fornication, that, that we aren't even to look at a person for, for, for the sense of lusting after them, because guess what? Jesus said you committed adultery in your heart. I'm just trying to help us. And if it's not helping you, ooh, it's helping me. Because what I don't want to do is preach down here, say I'm a Christian, dance and shout and go to church and do this and do that. And Lord knows, be a teacher of the word. But then when it's time for him to say, come on in, the door shut at the, the, at the very point of my foot, my foot by the pearly gate. No way. Mm -mm. No, no, no. If I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to go to hell from the bar room. I'm not going to hell from the pew. If I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to go to hell from the strip club. Something I don't even, I'm not even interested in. But if I'm going to hell, you better believe I'm going to go to hell from there. I'm not going to hell from the pew or from the church house or from the pool pit. People of God, that, those things ought not to be. I'm telling you, churches have given us a false sense of uh, covering and a false sense of, um, you know, the blood of Jesus. I can, I can repent. You're right. You can't. But when you become habitual in something, it is not about repentance. It's about getting saved. So now in closing, I'm about to definitely shut it down. In closing, I, I, I wanted to show you something else. But you see the, the connection about the murder and the lying lips. You see the connection. Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, um, 18 through 21 real quickly. I have much, but it won't be able to get in tonight. Proverbs 10. I hope it's helping somebody. 10, 18. Look what it says. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips. See, lying can also be a generational curse. Do you know families of people that just lie? Everybody lies. The, the whole family, everybody you meet, you can meet them at different times different junctions, different functions. But when you meet them, you're going to be able to relate because there's something about that person, what, they, they, what they're saying, those words coming off their lips. Yep, they're related to this one. They're related to that one. Oh, that's the whole family's thing because everybody is lying. But look what it says. 
Whoever hides hatred has lying lips. And whoever spreads slander is a fool. See, that's why you got to cover that mouth. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. I'm telling you, I'm at the point of just stop talking so much. How about that? The, not when I'm teaching. I'm talking about just no, normally. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. People of God, this is very clear that if you hide hatred, stop saying you don't have hate in your heart. When the manifestation of the very thing that you're saying you don't have, you keep on doing. Instead of saying what you don't have, Lord, take it out. Lord, deliver me. God, save me. I don't want to bust hell wide open. If I'm deceived and don't see it, Lord, please have mercy on me. In a multitude of words, sin is not lacking. Stop talking. Just stop. Just let it go. Hey, say little. The more, the more you say, sin is probable to be a part of that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that's the one I told you about. Let's go to it quickly. Ephesians 4, 25. Ephesians chapter 4. This is probably the last one tonight. Ephesians 4 and 25. Last week, I, I shut it down and continue to teach because it was so good to me. I needed that. And this is stemming from all of last week. So we are, we, we are, we're good. Verse uh, 25, look what it says. Therefore, putting away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. God requires that of us. He says, put away, this is Paul, put away lying. Speak truth with your neighbor. For we are members of one another. It is not even kosher for you and I to speak lies to one another. We are in the body. We are members of the body. So it says, put that away. Stop the lies. Look. Get rid of that kind of action and speak truth with your neighbor. For we are members of one another. It says, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. People of God are saying clearly, you know, don't go to bed with stuff that haven't been re hasn't, go to bed, hasn't been resolved. Don't go to bed with stuff just up in the air. Like some people like to walk out, shut down, don't want to talk anymore. No. Talk it out, get it out there, but be honest. Integrity, honesty. That's what you need to build relationships. You can't have relationship on a lie. You can't build anything up on a lie because guess what? It's going to crumble. This is building anew. Stop lying and stop saying stuff that you know is deceiving other people and you're deceiving yourself because you have now, and I, I couldn't get to that scripture, but I will get to it next time. You have now become an enemy of God because God is going to fight against you. That's what the word says. I'm not saying that. God is going to fight against you because you have become now what he hates. So that spirit of lies is going to cause that reaction. Not that God is going to do you anything, but what you're spewing out. You are sowing that. So you're going to reap the destruction that comes from your own mouth. Lord Jesus. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. A thing that causes great disgust and hatred, people of God. You must understand that this is an atrocity for us as believers. There are so many Christians who are just lying. I'm talking about just lying. Just every time you see them, I'm people when you do business with them, you see they shady. People when you when you get close to them, you see that they just say stuff. I remember today I told somebody I was going to get them a, 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 a scarf. Or a, I was like, oh no, I got to make sure I get that done because I got you know you don't want to say stuff that you're not because you don't want to. Pro Pro project what you're not if that's not who you are. And if you say it, you want to do it. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Father God, we thank you tonight for the reality of the truth of your word. God, we all need your grace and your mercy. 
We can't do a thing without you. Father, if there be any one of us or all of us who have gotten off course, we ask that you help us tonight to put us back on that narrow path. God, you said the path to you is narrow, but wide is the gate, the way to destruction. Father, we don't want to be destroyed by our ignorance or by just our pride, thinking that we can just do whatever we want, say whatever we want, and God is not going to be there to hear. Father, we say tonight as a, as a group, as a ministry, as a family, we want to please you. And if any of us have gone astray, have lost our place with the book of life, our name's no longer written there, God, we say write them, write them back, put them back in that book by the blood of Jesus. And God, we ask you tonight to convict our hearts if this teaching has brought anything similar to what we have done to our opening. Convict our hearts that we will not just take this as the word was for him or for her, but God, that word was for us. We ask you now for your help. We need your help because we don't want any of the evil one in us. Like Jesus said, none of him is in me. Father, we want that testimony tonight. Help us to get it. And we look to you to help us that our tongues will be delivered from the evil that has been spewed in our hearts through hatred. I bind the spirit of hate. I bind the spirit of murder. And I loose the spirit of love and forgiveness. That all of us, Father God, can come before you as children of God with pure hearts. Thank you for helping us to build anew tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anyone would like to say anything before we leave? We're almost gone. But if you want to confess, if you want to say something, guess what? Don't be ashamed. Speak it out. Because I'm always talking about myself. I'm always putting myself out there because I want everybody to be comfortable that this word is not for you. This word is for us. Anyone? Okay. I thank God for you all. It has been a pleasure and an honor to sit here and to share with you this truth. I'm humbled by it. And I'm also challenged in every area. And I thank God for truth. More is to come because this is a true, true topic that we are going to delve into until we exhaust what we know at this time until God gives us more. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you peace prosperity, joy unspeakable, and full of glory. If he needs something in your life to die, just know he wants to resurrect you. So let it die so you can live a new life. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Have a great night. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love you too. Bye-bye. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Yo, bro, yes. Every time, yes. I turn around, yes. He keeps blessing me. All right, now. I'm blessed. Every time. I turn around, yeah. He keeps blessing me, yeah. I've got to run and tell it how the Lord been good to me. That's called his grace. Yeah. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Every time, oh, oh, I turn around. He keeps blessing me. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Every time, yes, God, I turn around. He keeps, come on, let's turn from our wicked ways. Been good to me, blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. When my praises go up, yes. Yeah. 
God's blessings come down. When the praises go up, God's blessings come down. Oh, yes, I know. I got to run and tell it. How the Lord been good to me. He keeps blessing me. When the praises go up, thank you, Lord. God's blessings come down. When the praises go up, thank you, Father. God's blessings come down. When the praises go up, hey. God's blessings come down. Yes, God, I gotta praise you tonight. When the praises go up, God's blessings come down. Oh, yes. I've got to run and tell it. Have the Lord been good to me? Oh, blessing me. Yes. Blessing me. All right now. Blessing me. Put your hands together, those who are still with me. Hey, hey. Blessing me. Don't worry about it. As long as you have the spirit of truth, the blessings are going to run you down and take you over. Hey, blessing me. Woo! Blessing me. Blessing me. Hallelujah. Blessing. Oh, yeah. Blessing me. Oh, blessing me. Blessing me. Every time I turn around, blessing me. Yes, blessing me. Thank you, Lord. Blessing me. Deliver me, God. Hey, woo. Yes, blessing me. Thank you, God. Blessing me. Blessing me. Every time I turn around, blessing me. Go on and bless it. Blessing me. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Blessing me. Blessing me. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Blessing me. Blessing me. Every time I turn around, blessing me. Hey. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessing me. Blessing me. Oh, yeah. Blessing me. Thank you, God. Blessing me. Every time I turn around. Oh. Come on, turn around. Woo! Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for all those blessings. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 yes, uh, eh. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord, people of God. I thank God that you stayed with me to just uh, <clears throat> praise a little bit. I have one more song I'm going to play, and I'll be gone. But you can go ahead on and be blessed tonight. I love you. Thank God for you. But it's only a test. Now, I'm going to go ahead on and just rejoice a little bit more. And then I'll be out of here in just a second. But it's good sometimes just to stay back and praise the Lord that that word can be saturated on the inside of your heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. But what you're going through is just a test. And you're going to pass it this time. No more failing. Yeah, no more failing. No more of that. That's over and done with. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now tell what you're going through. It's gonna be over real soon. Yeah, keep the faith. Yeah, don't you give up. How it going? Oh yeah, it's only a test. What you're going through. It's gonna be over. How long? Real soon. Keep the faith. Don't you give up. It's only a test what you're going through, and it won't last always. Try to come just to make us strong. We got a little bit of rain, we just won't grow. Hey, hey, keep, keep the faith. Yeah, 
It's all that a test you're going through. Yes, it is. It's only a test what you're going through. It's going to be over. Hey, real slow. I'm going to pass it this time. I can't fail any more tests. I got to pass it. I got to let the devil know. I don't want none of him in me. Hallelujah. What you're going through. And it won't last always. Try your strong, just to make us strong. Without a little bit of rain, we just won't grow. Stay strong, keep the faith. Yes, it's only a test you're going through. Come on, put your hands together right here, right here, right here. What you're going through, it's gonna be over. Real soon, real soon, it's gonna be a thing of the past. Keep the faith, don't you give up, don't you give up. You come too far to give up. He never said it would be easy, but he did say you would come through. Hey, ha. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Hey. Oh, yeah. Ah. Hey. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Keep the faith. Don't give up. It's only a test. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the faith. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. It's only a test. Somebody want to know it. Go ahead and keep the faith. Oh, yeah. It's only a test. It's only a test. Oh, yeah. The faith. No matter what you're going through, it's only a test. Oh, put your hands together. Celebrate. Hold on. Be strong. It's only a test. Am I got, do I have somebody holding on with me tonight? Hold on. Be strong. Hallelujah. It's only a test. It's only a test. Hey. Hold on. Be strong. Yeah. It's only a test. Thank you, Lord. It's only a test. Hallelujah. Hold on. Hey. Be strong. Hey. hey, hey. It's only a test. It's only a test. Hey, hey, hey. It's only a test. Hold on, hold on. Be strong. Hold on, hold on. Hold, hold on, be strong. Hold on. Hold on, be strong. Hold on. Hold on, be strong. Yes. Oh, yes, it is. It won't kill you. Arise and shine. I told you earlier, it looks like the devil is winning. He's a liar. Remember that. Hey! Woo! Hallelujah. God will not allow you to be disgraced. And he will not allow your words to fall to the ground. He said you won't sink or fail. You better know that. Hey! Hey! Ah! Oh. Thank you, Lord. It's only a test. Yes. Hey! It's only a test. 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 Hallelujah, God. Just stretch your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. I'm going to pass this test because I recognize, Lord, I can't act like the devil and get rid of the devil. I got to be all the way with God. Woo! Hallelujah. All right. Love you all. <laughs> Have a good night. It is well with our souls because it's only a test. Have a good night. Love you all. Bye-bye. Good night, family. Conference recording. Good night. All right. It's only a test. Good night. Love you. It's only a test. Hallelujah, Jesus.